Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous spring day here in the end times in paradise back in Garfield, Texas after a several day break from the mainstream media news uh, at the Old Settlers Music Festival for the past week or so, so I uh, finally, after a five-day hiatus, I have been spending, uh, good God, how many hours last night and this morning uh, combing the mainstream media, the alternative media, and all of the various uh, stories my Alert Tribes members have been uh, sending me uh, to bring me up to date on a few of the stories I missed over the past week, over Earth Day weekend, um, just to see what is going on on the planet here on an average now Tuesday morning. So as I do every Tuesday morning, I just turn on the mainstream media to see what's on the minds of the mainstream media doomers and so this is a combination of of uh, the main headlines the science pages and a variety of headlines that my alert tribes members have sent me over the past few days got a lot to talk about here not sure how long this rant will last of course the number one story on planet earth for the the past week I mean hundreds of hundreds of versions of this story. Uh, it was certainly uh, the major subject of conversation at the Old Settlers Music Festival. Royal, this is, I'm just going to read a few of the headlines. Royal Baby, latest news. New Prince meets family as world awaits name announcement. How about Everything we know so far after Duchess gives birth to boy. This was their third child, their second son and their third child. Here is new Prince of Cambridge receives family visitors at home. Prince Charles jokes, I don't know how I'm going to keep up. Gun salutes fired in London to celebrate new royal baby. Arthur, Albert, Philip, latest royal baby name odds. The bookies are actually taking bets uh, from the clueless fucking morons on what this baby, this little planet-eating bundle of joy uh, will be named. Uh, I suggest Prince Caterpillar. How about Prince Locust? Okay. Proud father and besotted mother. Besotted mother introduce newborn to the world. How about Cutie the Third? Cutie the Third, meaning the, the, the third cute little uh, adorable bundle of, of planet-eating joy. Cutie the Third, how the world reacted to the new prince's birth. Here is Hambone Littletail reacting to the new prince's birth. I hope this newborn little bundle of planet-eating joy gets everything uh, in his lifetime that he has coming towards him. And, you know, and, and, and again, I'm not, I'm not blaming the, the newborn prince. I'm blaming the clueless fucking moron parents of his. Anyway, I would read some of the comments from adoring readers from around the world, but I got to move on from that story, from the royal family welcoming their second son. How about family welcomes 14th son? Family welcomes 14th son. Quote, I cannot imagine not 
doing this says clueless fucking moron. For many parents, the idea of 14 children might seem overwhelming, but one Rockford, Michigan family says they were, quote, destined to have the family they do. This is Joy, I'm sorry, Jay and Kateri Schwan welcomed a son, their 14th to their family on Wednesday, and dad could not be more proud. They now have boys ranging in age from two days to 25 years. And I guess they have no daughters. It never mentions it. Uh, anyway, congratulations to those clueless fucking morons. And of course, all the comments uh, from the clueless fucking moron readers. Oh, isn't that adorable? 14 new uh, whatevers to go spread uh, their spawn uh, around the planet. <clears throat> All right. Let's see. Let's go over to New Scientist magazine. Uh, if I can get rid of the cookies warning. I just agreed to New Scientist cookies. All right. Almost 1,500 bird species face extinction, and we are to blame. No shit, Sherlock. 1,469 bird species are now officially threatened with extinction, warms a global report. That is around one-eighth of the 10,966 known species. And, uh, and I'll just skip this next headline talking about how one-eighth of the planet's birds are now threatened with extinction. Bullshit level, DEFCON 5! Any clueless fucking moron on this planet thinking for one fucking minute that only one-eighth of the birds, not to mention the mammals and uh, the reptiles and the amphibians and the fish and more and more of the goddamn bugs pull your head out of your ass. This is the official uh, newest count. Take a wild guess. Farming is the biggest single threat to birds. 74% of the officially threatened birds, 1,091 species are in trouble today because of expansion and intent, in intensification of farming. No shit, Sherlock. This is true everywhere from tropical species in South America to farmland birds in Europe. Uh, the new study uh, released on Monday, released yesterday, reveals that farms now occupy six times more of Earth's land surface than they did 300 years ago, rising from 6 to 38 percent of our planet's surface. There you go. Uh, quoting the report, today two and a half times more people are overweight than undernourished and average daily protein consumption is a third higher than needed, close quote, and the growth of agriculture to support that t statistics is uh, destroying birds' habitat. Uh, then they go around the world from South America to Sub-Saharan Africa. 
Jesus, uh, the loss of land is being compounded by other disruptive human activities. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, let's see from, let's go look back in time a little bit. Uh, probably, I think this is Science Daily. Wow. Unprecedented wave of large mammal extinctions linked to prehistoric humans. No shit, this is the latest research into the big debate about what caused all of these megafaunal extinctions. Hmm. This is according to the University of Nebraska study summary. Homo sapiens. Neanderthals and other recent human relatives may have begun hunting large mammal species down to size by way of extinction at least 90,000 years earlier than previously thought, according to a new study. No shit, the magnitude and the and scale of the extinction wave caused by humans surpassed any other recorded during the last 66 million years. No shit, and of course one of those megafaunal extinctions that the defenders of the noble savage never want to talk about is the Australian megafaunal extinction uh, from whenever it was 50, 60,000 years ago when Aborigines got to, uh, got to Australia and immediately proceeded to wipe out all the large land mammals all over uh, anything bigger than a kangaroo uh, going the way of the dodo bird uh, 50,000 fucking years before Honky got there with their goddamn rats and catses and rabbits and foxes. Uh, you know, where there was no corresponding climate change event, there is one reason there. There is absolutely, there was nothing else competing but anyway, uh, talking about history uh, repeating itself, let's bring it up to today. Australia's mammal extinction rate could worsen. No shit, Sherlock. And then they, of course, they bring birds into it as well. Australia's extinction rate for mammals already the highest in the world could worsen unless efforts are made to protect the most endangered species over the next two decades, scientists warn Tuesday. Um, and actually it's seven mammals and ten Australian birds uh, are next to head in to uh, oblivion uh, over the last 200 years since Honky got there to bat cleanup uh, with, what they, they, with the few animals that the Aborigines had left Honky. Since Honky arrived 200 years ago, at least 34 Australian mammal species and 29 birds have become extinct. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, let's see, kind of keeping in this same vein, going over to the Guardian, the cow, the cow could soon be the largest land mammal left due to human activity. Researchers examining extinction of large mammals as humans spread across the world see a worrying trend 
a worrying trend. Oh, shit. Sure. This is still more of the same study. The cow could soon be left as the biggest land animal on earth in a few centuries. Within a few centuries. Oh, come on now. No shit. According to a new study that examines the extinction of large mammals as humans spread around the world. Uh, yes, uh, anybody who thinks that the cow is going to be here in a few centuries got some bad news for you. Anyway, let's go from humans spreading around the land to humans spreading to the bottom of the deepest oceans, where we see race to the bottom, impact of deep sea fishing severely underestimated. No shit. Scientists have recalculated historical catch data to find that huge bottom trawlers that scrape the seafloor with huge nets may be killing far more fish and destroying more habitats than previously thought. By dragging heavy nets across the seafloor, bottom trawling has long been regarded as among the most indiscriminate and destructive of fishing methods. And now, new research shows that fishery managers, fishery managers, have grossly underestimated the global impacts of trawling for decades. A team of scientists from institutions around the world study global catch data from 65 years going back to 1950 and concluded that deep sea trawling, an especially lethal fishing technique that deploys industrial scale gear at depths greater than 1300 feet, caught and killed nearly 80 percent more fish than experts had previously estimated. No shit, Sherlock. Uh, the, uh, their analysis shows that the fishery may have taken 25 million tons of marine, marine life, whereas the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization claims only, only 14 million tons. That was bullshit. Yes, anybody who wants to believe these unadulterated uh, quotas coming from the United Nations based on the individual countries self-reporting. So what the United Nations is, is a whole bunch of foxes guarding the hen house from our atmosphere to the bottom of the ocean, lying through their fucking teeth to the UN. Every, anybody with a fucking brain understands this. And then the United Nations just parrots this bullshit, and then the mainstream media just parrots the United Nations bullshit, uh, while anybody with a fucking brain knows we are so fucked. Moving along. From the bottom of the ocean to Asian jungles, Online skin trades fuels Myanmar elephant slaughter. 
No shit, Sherlock. An emerging online market for elephant skin in China is threatening the very survival of the creatures in neighboring Myanmar as poaching intensifies to meet demand, conservationist warned on Tuesday. Myanmar has watched with alarm as the number of Asian elephants found in the country's forest, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Myanmar has watched with alarm as the number of slain, otherwise known as murdered elephants found in the country's forest rises every year with many blaming the trade in the mammal's hide. The biggest market for the products is in China, where the tough skin is ground up and used to treat stomach or skin ailments, or sold as jewelry in the form of blood red beads and pendants, and the items are increasingly advertised and sold on the internet. Okay, from the jungles of Southeast Asia to pretty much the entire planet, but certainly here in the U.S., driverless, driverless cars are forcing cities to become smart. <clears throat> Autonomous vehicles are coming and they have the potential to radically better our lives. Detected. Take precaution. But to reap the rewards of this new technology, we first have to adapt the world to its requirements. We are now going to adapt our planet to reap the rewards of driverless car technology. This means preparing the way for massive engineering projects that will introduce the latest generation of mobile networks into our cities. Oh, Jesus fucking Christ. Okay, let's go up to Lake Erie, where I think I'm going to be heading this summer. Maybe I can bring you a first-hand report. Study shows no drop in pollutants feeding Lake Erie algae. No shit, Sherlock. Let's see. Uh, does it ever start? Research into Lake Erie's toxic algae shows no decrease in the pollutants feeding the persistent algae blooms over the past five years, according to the, I, the Ohio Environmental Protection Agencies. Uh, the review finds that nearly all of the phosphorus and nitrogen flowing from Ohio's streams and rivers into the lake is coming mainly from agricultural runoff. Oh, shit. <coughs> yep. Okay, from that business as usual story, let's go back to Business Insider. I just talked about Business Insider in my Earth Day mini roundup. What is on Business Insider's mind uh, three days after after Earth Day? They're looking at the 25 most dangerously polluted cities in the, U in the U.S. And they're talking mostly about uh, air pollution in this story, not water pollution. <clears throat> Approximately 134 million Americans live in counties with 
unhealthy levels of air pollution, according to the American Lung Association's 2018 State of the Air report. That figure is a 9 million person increase from last year's report. Okay, and it's not surprising that I think 9 out of the 10 top most polluted cities in, in the United States are from California, not just Los Angeles, but all of those goddamn cities in that absolute pit from hell known as the Central Valley of California. Pretty much every single city in the Central Valley of, of California making it into the top 10 along with Los Angeles. But if you want to find the number one most polluted city anywhere in the 50 United States, you would not look to Southern California. You would, in fact, according to the Lung Association, be looking at Fairbanks, Alaska. Fairbanks, Alaska beating out Bakersfield, California last year's winner uh, to take the top spot as America's number one most polluted city. But it's not just Fairbanks. Don't forget the Sub-Saharan Africans as Nigerians, Nigerians demand air quality data over pollution fears. This is mainly looking at uh, perhaps the single biggest shithole city on the entire planet, Lagos, Nigeria. If I had to pick one city, one epicenter of every single thing that is wrong with this planet, it would be the living shithole open sewer of Lagos, Nigeria. Jesus. Uh, in Lagos, Nigerians might be choking to an early death. Oh, shit. Yes. As diesel generators that compensate for an inadequate electricity grid belch acrid smoke, combining with emissions from old vehicles and traffic gridlock, an unregulated industry and burning waste further turns the air foul. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, let's go to the single biggest unadulterated horseshit story from Earth Day. Several versions of this story. Census finds increase in Mekong River's Irrawaddy Dolphins. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Now, uh, I, I'm, not, I, I, I'm not necessarily arguing with the fact that uh, the, the census found, counted more of these freshwater dolphins in the Mekong River. Uh, for all sorts of, of reasons for other than the fact that there are, that means on any level there are more dolphins there. Uh, but anybody who believes, as this story from the AP and all these others, that this quote alleged increase in the annual count means on any, it, 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 you're supposed to jump the shark to believing that this means uh, these dolphins are on the road to recovery. That, that's breaking so many logical fallacies. I don't have anybody, I don't have time to go into it. Anybody on this fucking planet with half a brain who thinks that the dolphins in the Mekong River are recovering 
pull your head out of your clueless moron rant. This uh, next headline is just, you know, just uh, vindicating one of my no shit Sherlock uh, predictions for the year. Nicaraguan journalist shot dead on Facebook Live while covering protest. So this uh, journalist was literally uh, on Facebook uh, talking trash uh, about the Nicaraguan government. Um, and, you know, and, and defending these protesters. And as he was talking, got a bullet through his head. Will not be the last one of those. These next few guys, just for time, uh, I might have to, uh, well, uh, good God, I, I could see this rant could go on for hours. Uh, so I'm just going to read the headlines the most uh, best I can. I might come back to some of these. I have so much piling up, as you can imagine. What a 1968 mouse experiment teaches us about LA's growing density. Hint, it is not good. There you go. Uh, the conclusion of the experiment, um, of the mouse experiment, the population reached 620 by day 315, after which the population growth dropped markedly. Um, <clears throat> the mice's social structure and behaviors had, had broken down, breeding never resumed, and behavior patterns changed. The conclusions? When all the space is taken and all the social ro roles are filled, competition and stress will be such that society will break down and the population will collapse. Oh shit, Sherlock. Okay, what's going on with robots? Amazon's next secret project could be robots that follow you around your own home. Oh shit, Sherlock. Uh, how about from, let's go over to Japan. Construction robots weld, bolt, and lift to beat worker shortage. Oh shit, Sherlock. Who needs workers when you have robots? Uh, I might have to come back to this one. The Age of the Imbecile. The world is turning catastrophically stupid. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. From uh, Truth Dig, our greatest threat is the hardest one to act upon. And this is a book review uh, that I need to look in. Uh, but what it's talking about in this article in this book is how we how humans are incapable of looking at things uh, you know that aren't an immediate threat like a saber-toothed tiger crouching outside your cave if, if it is if it is like more than a week into the future this the human brain is incapable of detecting any long-term building threats until it becomes a saber-toothed tiger at the cave door, which is exactly what the collapse of a planet is coming to. But anyway, these next few are these next few 
uh, these last few articles I will return to tomorrow in my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant. Just going to read the uh, headlines and revisit them in more depth tomorrow from the good old Washington Post. One of the most worrisome predictions about climate change may already be coming true. Oh, this would be another way of saying sooner than previously thought. Okay, how about the Great Barrier Reef experienced a catastrophic die-off following marine heat wave? No shit, Sherlock. Here is California faces steep increase in per precipitation whiplash threatening infrastructure. No shit, Sherlock. And wow, California's trees are dying at a catastrophic rate. Everywhere you look, there are dead trees. No shit, Sherlock. How about NASA baffled by mysterious ice circles in the Arctic? This is just this weirdest literal new sign of the end times. These weird fucking ice circles. Uh, but I'm just going to wind up with this headline. Uh, it is official. Uh, scientists confirm Uranus smells like farts. There you go. It is official. Uranus smells like farts. I think we need to look at our own anus planet, our own shithole planet. You don't need to go to Uranus to smell the farts. The farts are alive and well on our own dying shithole of a planet. As we are so fucked. And anyway, this uh, this need to wind up this week's edition of my Doomsday Tuesday headlines and get out here to this goddamn garden. Uh, there is my what my garden looks like after one week of not weeding. I think I have my work cut out for me in the Amazon jungle of my own backyard. Smoke him if you got him, guys. We are so fucked. Bye, guys.